Bula Vinaka everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're here for the first time, I welcome you. If you, you've been using my videos as part of your revision, welcome back. So um, today, from popular requests and demand, I'm going to be talking about Year 12 English is a report writing. So I don't want to waste much of your time. I'm going to go straight, go straight to uh, discussing on report writing. So uh, let's start. Okay, thank you. Now, these are some points that I want to discuss on before we start with the discussion. So report writing is another option in the formal writing section of the Year 12 English Examination. Okay, just to foreshadow, if and when you get into Year 13, this is no longer an option, report writing. This is only for Year 12 English that we have report writing. Once again, report writing is only for Year 12 English that in option 1 or in the formal, option A, question 1, formal writing section, there is report writing. So what is the other? Yes, expository essay. So this is another option apart from uh, uh, expository. Next, reports are usually written to convey information that has been gathered to persuade or convince and make recommendations. Now, I've come across the teachers who have complained to me about how students can't comprehend or understand that report writing is scoring. Now, first of all, kids, you are exposed to a lot of social media, maybe your attention span is very short, or things are usually given to you bite-sized where you can easily digest and able to understand. For report writing, it's exactly the same thing. All you have to do is read the information that is in front of you and report it back. Okay, just like you've watched a film and you go home or you go and tell your friends and family about something that you watched or something that you witnessed. This is the same concept. All right, another thing is it must be written in the third person with a formal tone. So third person as in there is no personal pronouns. Personal pronouns include I, we, us, um, ours. So you need to remove yourself and it has to all be in third person with a formal tone. All right, moving on. When we need to uh, do our report writing, these are some things that you need to consider or some things that you need to keep at the back of your mind. Now, subheadings need to be highlighted. So subheadings, they include your introduction, right? Your, your sometimes there come methods or in the question, they'll always have what are the subheadings that you need to have in your final write-up that you will discuss. So after this discussion, I will look at a past year paper where we will go through the subheadings that is being given by the examiner and that you will use. Now the past tense is used, obviously, because you are reporting something. Just like reported speech, your tenses will change. Now the future tense is used to describe what the contents of the report will entail. So you will all have that in your introduction. So your, so your future tense will be there. So just how you write down this essay will discuss. So that is a future tense. Okay. In the introduction, now in the introduction, you will describe the purpose or the reason of the report. Once again, in the introduction. So just like you have uh, introduction for your expository essay, you will have a thesis. The same concept applies here. So that will happen in your introduction. Methodology. Now methodology or the method of carrying out the research is described with the use of the passive voice. So your object comes first or what is being studied upon, it will be the main uh, focal focal point of your of your sentences. Now, in the Fiji Year 12 Certificate Examination, now they give subheadings, and it is recommended that they be followed. So once again, we will look at a paper, and then you will understand what is uh, what I'm meaning here. All right, only use the facts and data in the table shown to report. Once again, students, you know, uh, don't put your ideas or don't put your recommendations until the last. Now, recommendations are where you will put in your solutions to certain problems that you've seen or some of the um, some ways that you can help with uh, the problems in the report and that's where you have in your recommendations. Okay, 
conclusions are made by reading between the lines and after some research has been done so this can only be done if you have been practicing this is where your revision is paramount so while making this video you have a few weeks till your external exams or if you're watching this just before your external exams and you haven't done enough practice i suggest you just stick to this uh, exposure to essay do not do something where you did not practice on students all right so just stick to your strengths but you need to do a lot of practice in order for you to become better at something eh? so recommendations this is the last paragraph of uh, the uh, report writing and these are made so the initial problems may be minimized or even solved so these are some points that you need to consider when you are looking at recommendations. now recommendations should be as practical as possible so they have to make sense that basically means it has to make sense the present tense is used because this is something that you are yet to um, that is yet to carry out or this is your opinion on the matter that they can solve or minimize the problem and the tone needs to be authoritative all right so you need to use words that show that this needs to be done so for example if there is um, uh, soil erosion a recommendation is trees need to be planted in order to strengthen the soil with their root systems so there is minimum to no soil erosion so that needs to be your your tone eh? so how you're going to bring about the recommendations all right so those are some notes that you need to consider when you are doing your report writing all right so now let's look at a example of a report that i have written all right guys let's look at an example now this i've taken from the english communications year 12. the um i'm sure i'm i'm sorry about the page i'll have it done below but um this is um the notes and some of the ideas come from the, the english communications year 12. So I'm not sure if you're, some of your teachers are not using them, but if they are, you can always refer to it. Eh? So this is our graph or the table. So this is a graph showing trends of noise in Newtown. So we have our key, which is on my right. Uh, Roadworks, which is this one. Sorry. Yeah, this one. Then you have factories going up. Now these are the different noises that are coming in from the different years and this is probably the the measurement of the sound that it makes. Eh? And then you have the traffic noise which is also increased in 1994. There's a big spike also there. And then this one is the domestic noise. So there is a huge increase. All right. So this is what we would call a spike. Okay. Now spike is a, a, a very quick increase and it's been steadily rising all right then we have uh, for this factories it has become stagnant so the sound con consistently stays at that rate while one that is going down which is roadworks okay so not many roads you know road not every day is our road being made and we have noise from there so you know once again, students, when you are looking at this, try and figure out, like I usually tell my kids, whenever you look at things, whenever you read your notes, whenever you are looking at the table, trying to interpret inf information, it has to make sense. It has to make sense. And if you are trying to interpret information on a table, this has to make sense. So instead of you just assuming that you cannot read, go back to your year nine and ten skills of uh, map reading okay so i, I also teach uh, social science and geography and this is basic math skills or basic interpretation of a graph where a key is given on the side and then you just read so you're in year 12 you did graphs in your project and this is similar to that so while you were doing your graphs and your pie charts and your line graph in your project this is exactly what you uh, should be able to do by now. So that is our graph showing the trends of news, noise. Sorry, trends of noise in Newtown. Okay, let's move on to our final um, write-up in for the report. 
All right, our topic is trends of complaints about noise in Newtown. So you can use the same uh, uh, topic as the heading of the graph, which is um, showing trends of noise in Newtown. Just move around some of the wordings. So trends of complaints about noise in Newtown. So introduction. Uh, okay, students, your final write-up has to be in subtopics. So that is something different to expository. So they have to be in subtopics. So we call these subtopics where there is a clear indication that that's an introduction. So it's written on top. And then your other subtopics, main trends, methods, scope, and introduction. Just um, I apologize for these uh, red lines. They are my, the app on my laptop. So it's trying to autocorrect. But anyway, so introduction between 1980 and 1996. Look at that. Between 1980 to 1986, right, the environmental authorities in the city of Newton received complaints about noise in that area. Now, the sources of noise, noise came from four main areas. So, what are you going to do? You are going to list down what is in the key because it's showing the main, main, um, main uh, areas where the noises are coming from. So, roadworks factories, traffic, and domestic homes. Now, this report, remember, students, this is also our, yes, our thesis, all right? This is also our thesis. So this report will discuss the main trends seen and make recommendations on how the problem of excessive noise can be approached. So this is, you are going to just report what you've seen, make recommendations, and then that will be your last subtopic. Okay, moving on. Method, scope, and introduction. Now, there are three methods we used to study the above issue. People of Newtown were interviewed. Members of the Newtown City Council were given questionnaires to answer. And the third method was the searching of information through the media, especially newspapers. It was difficult to get enough people to be interviewed, and the media search took much longer than was expected. However, the City Council members were very helpful. Okay, students. Okay, you must be wondering, where is all of this? Where is it written in our graph that people were interviewed, that uh, you got the newspaper from the, you got the information from the newspaper, etc. That's where your common sense comes in. So obviously, if you're going to make this, um, this graph showing all of this um, information, you have to gather your information from somewhere. You can't just pull it out of thin air. So that's where your project skills come in. How did you get your information to complete your project? Questionnaires, interviews, internet search, okay? So use that um, uh, seeking uh, methods and make guesses here, which one? You just use three. So this was the how information was gathered, which was through questionnaires, through the media, and then obviously last one was through interview. Eh? Okay, main trends. Main trends, that means you are going to report this. This is what you're going to report. And we call it the main trend. So what is the main trend for the noise in Newtown? Okay. Although the number of complaints received in 1980 about roadworks was the highest at 600 over the years, the number has steadily declined. But in 1996, there were less than 100 complaints. Factory noise grew from 400 complaints in 1980 to 600 complaints in 1994 okay let's look at it again see it's just reading the information so if you're going to read this the um, the noise from the factories in 1980 it was 400 then it increased to probably 500 1982 and then a slight increase in 1984 then a steady movement from 1986 up till 1994 all right so that's just reading the information on the graph now this was so etc now you can always screenshot this or pause and you can always um, uh, go back to the graph while you are um, going over your notes so what you're going to do students is continuously go back to your graph you cannot make up this information when either marker is uh, marking your paper, I will always refer back to the graph and see, okay, this student knows what they're talking about. So please students, refer back to the graph when you are writing the main trends. Okay, however, the greatest rise in complaints was about domestic noise. So the last one that you will discuss will be the most significant or the most important. So that came from 
domestic noise. So in 1980, there was a huge... Alright, let's discuss the last paragraph, which was um, the noise complaint. Eh? So however... Sorry, the domestic uh, complaints eh, from the domestic noise. So, however, the greatest rise in complaints was about domestic noise. This was about 500 complaints in 1980 to 1,400 complaints in 1996. So, let's look at the number of complaints, which was started from 500, and it went spiked, went down a bit to 400 in 1986, 1988, Sorry, 1988, then there was a huge rise, and then it increased up to 1,400 in 1994. That's how you read um, your comp the, the, how you read the graph, how you read the the information that is given, and then you try to interpret it. Eh? So those are the main trends. Now let's move on to conclusion. So Newton's population has grown steadily in the period surveyed, leading to the sharp increase in domestic noise. This is also attributed to the rise in two other complaints, that of the factories and traffic. Now more people have moved into the area, therefore the different types of noise affect more people, resulting in a general rise in complaints. So students, once again, you need to be able to make... Um, you know, uh, common sense decisions, and uh, when you are interpreting a graph, this is all needs to come into play. So this is an area that's in town. If you are from Suva, or you live in Newtown, so you can obviously understand what I'm talking about. But those of us who might come from outer islands, so always know that those of us who are in the city, we continuously go through um, urbanization there are more houses being built everywhere you look if you're in Lotoka like I am or if you are in Suva uh, everywhere that you go you constantly see new renovations new buildings being erected so with this comes noise because there'll be people and also there's traffic because there are more cows so sorry cars not cows but that there are more um, cars in the country so that is where our conclusion was made. Eh? So let's move on to the last uh, subtopic with recommendation. Okay, students, you notice that conclusion came before the recommendations. This is something different to your expository essay where conclusion is always the last paragraph. In report writing, recommendations uh, are the last, is the last paragraph. So the main cause for concern is domestic noise. That was obvious. We saw it in the, in the graph. So it is recommended that the environmental health authorities conduct a public awareness program so that the population can become aware of how they can reduce noise that annoys their neighbors. The police can also be asked to help. The factories in the area can also be asked to reduce their noise levels to a more acceptable degree. They should be asked to submit their plans to do this in writing to the minister. Sorry, there's a typing um, error. It is also re recommended that no further permits to be given to build factories in the area. Now, traffic can be diverted to use the main bypass, especially during the busy hours. For now, roadworks are a minor problem. So, yeah, 12, this is looking at um, ways that you can use to minimize or to solve the problem that is coming from the graph that you have just read. So, that is the end. And uh, now let's look at a past year paper, and I will tell you how the question is being presented to you. Eh? So this is the graph that we were looking at. Okay, let's look at the amount of uh, subtopics. You start with introduction one, method scope, and introduction two, main trends, and then you have your conclusion and recommendation. So let's move on to our um, past year paper. Students, I didn't think just to pull up one paper from uh, my uh, USB on the past year papers. So for those of you who not only need past year papers for English, but for all your other subjects that you'll be sitting for. So just search on just your normal search engine, Google past year papers Fiji, and then uh, go to the first um, option that is given. So past year pa past exam papers, MEHA, which is Ministry of Education, Heritage and Arts. Click on it. And then it comes to this page. So when you come to the Ministry of Education page, I want you to click again on this link. So it is uh, they've set up a Google Drive link. Click click on it. Just wait a few seconds. So click, click on it, and then here it is. So this is what's available to us to see. So there is the search drive. 
and you do so it goes as far as um well 2012 and even lower so we won't go right to the lowest one we'll go to last year's paper 2022 so let's um open 2022 a fiji year 12 certificate examination you know, you got other siblings who are in different years so we have the examiner's report and detailed solution so let's go to the first uh, option all right it's taking some time to load but eventually it'll get there okay all right so you've got the different um oh all right okay thank you okay let's open the first one so this is the examiner's report for english okay sorry okay before let's just uh, quickly go to the year that the section that we want which is report writing so let me just quickly scroll through scroll through sorry Right. I, I, for one, I think this is a good website for us to look through, you know, what to expect from the examiner. Um, it's unfortunate that some of you are just starting to pass, but I hope some of you have uh, really deep learning where you are studying in order to become deep thinkers. But, um, you know, these things are here to help you not to fully rely on it. Try and study so you can actually understand. So this is lifelong learning. Yeah? So just give me a second while i find what we're looking for all right so um sorry i had to see to my kids um on that uh, this is our topic subject option trends from 2019 to 2021 so this is a statistics that we are going to interpret and we're going to re you are going to write a report on it eh? so subject options trend from 2019 to 21 uh, these are the number of uh, students and what they have chosen these are the subjects so you have biology physics chemistry, computer, technical drawing, applied technology. So in 2019, there was 900 who had opted for biology, 950, physics, 800, chem, 750, uh, computer, TD, 600, AT, 600. Then there is a, was this an increase or decline? decrease yeah? so we're going from 900 down to 700 uh, 950 950 the number has uh, remained then you have another decline going down from cam then increase in computer there's an increase in td and an increase in at in 2021 there was another decrease so it's steadily going down Okay, just looking at that uh, the bar graph, which is 600, then physics, it has remained the same. Okay, chemistry, it has remained the same. Computer, then we have seen a spike. So spike is going up. So 1,050 students have gone on to choose computer as a subject, and TD increased and AT increased. So you can see computer, TD, AT have all increased from the last three years from the table okay so on uh, taking that into consideration you can see how why this is happening you know why yes if you said or thought that this is because our country or our world has now become more technology based that we are now relying on technology or this is a very scoring subject the students are willing to take this because it is scoring for td and at but computer we know everything that we use we are using computers you cannot run away from it 
gone are the days where everything is filed written everything is usually typed you're watching this as a um alternative or as a way of uh, further expanding your learning on your computers on your laptops on your phones so computers the, the subject computer is mainly taken now so they are that is where you're going to interpret the information that is a reason then you can have your recommendation if they want more students to continue to take biophysics in camp to maybe they can create awareness that um, we need more doctors within the county instead of um instead of uh, getting in expatriates to take uh, over our uh, medical industry we can use that as an example or we can also say that uh, these uh, these subjects needs more um more jobs um to be available for students to take these uh, subjects or it could be other ways of learning and teaching eh? so these are some things that you need to uh, consider when you're writing that so class us uh, sorry students when you are watching these videos please do it knowing that it's partly common sense and it's partly um, things that you have to interpret in order for you to answer so there will be a discussion for today we'll end there with a um, with a example from the paper from 2022 now let's not Oh, sorry, before I end, forgive me. Now, these are the things that I was uh, reporting back on, which was on the subheading. So, introduction, major observations, reason for the trend, discuss two. So, that is good that it's telling us what to do. Conclusion, recommendation, which is discuss one. So, one, two, three, four, five. These are the subheadings which you will have in your, yes, which you will have in your paper. So, look at that and look at our sample that we had done okay the sample is similar to what you had done uh, which 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 to the one that needs to be done okay i have been a marker for the past four years and i would like to share with you that these subtopics need to be followed in your answer booklet if you do not have these subtopics and the only way in to um to uh divide your different paragraphs you have like for example for your conclusion you write in conclusion instead of writing this as a subtopic if you do not have subheadings we will not penalize you okay so you're watching this now it was a marker last year for year 12 and we did not penalize students if they did not have subheadings but it is clearly uh, written within the paragraph that this is your recommendation these are your observation etc you will obviously be awarded but students, please, in order for you to avoid uh, such silly mistakes like that, you need to have your subheadings in your final. So that is uh, our class for today. And uh, we hope, I hope, sorry, that you have learned something from this. Remember, um, report writing is scoring. Do it slowly. Consider your answers. Your exams are coming up. Your revision is uh, top notch from your different English teachers. Uh, and I thank you. For using this as part of just um, to help you more with what your teachers in school are teaching you so this is uh, an example and uh, my next videos I'll continue to take all your suggestions into consideration and I will continue to see that I can um, make up uh, that I can do these videos more often thank you once again for using my videos as part of your learning and your revision and I wish you all the best in your revision and your upcoming exams. Nakabakalevo.